she was just the sweetest girl in the world. You, you couldn't, oh God, you couldn't harm her. She was too sweet. Like you could not harm that little girl because she was just, she's so innocent, so smart. She was fantastic. She was perfect. In Columbus, we were able to arrest uh, Christy Sippel who is also known as Christy Hoskins. She has been charged with murder during the course of kidnapping, murder during the course of rape, murder during the course of sodomy, and human trafficking. Today's case is one that really makes you question your faith in humanity. The things these people did are so far beyond evil that I truly cannot wrap my head around how people like this exist. In all my time making these true crime videos, I don't know if I've heard of a case so freaking evil. But before we get into the case that will make you question everything, I want to take a moment to talk about a brand that leaves no questions about who they are and what they believe in. That brand is Billy. I love Billy overall as a brand, but I also love their products. Billy is on a mission to champion womankind. As a brand, they want to relieve us of the harmful pressures that lead us into participating in shame-based routines that leave some women feeling pressured to shave and achieve that hairless, flawless, airbrushed look. Instead, they want to introduce the beginning of a joy-based routine that makes you feel good about your body's natural hair and skin. For far too long, body care products that are meant to support the skin's needs have told us that we need to fight, hide, shrink, and conceal. But Billy is on a mission to make products that support what your skin actually needs. And now, they are so much more accessible as they are now launching their new products at Walmart. Let's start with their body wash. Their Sudsy Gel washes are gentle enough for everyday use, while also delivering the same benefits as your favorite skincare. They are thoughtfully formulated to keep you feeling fresh, clean, happy, and healthy all day. Their formulas are vegan and paraben-free and dermatologist approved. They come in so many different varieties. Their Bounce formula is made for anyone who is looking for deeply hydrated skin. Their Soothe, which is what I currently use, is for those of us looking to replenish the skin barrier. They also offer a Glow formula and a Sensi formula. In addition to their amazing body care products, they also offer an all-day deodorant as well as an AHA deodorant. Both are aluminum-free and help to fight odors. Their all-day deodorant is formulated to glide smoothly onto the skin without caking or staining clothes while working to absorb wetness and control odor. Meanwhile, their AHA deodorant is a supercharged formula with a powerful blend of potent acids that kill the odor-causing bacteria at the source while also working to combat ingrown hairs and discoloration. I absolutely love their deodorants as well. I love how smoothly they go on and how weightless their formulas feel, leaving me feeling fresh and smelling good all day. So if you want to get a fresh start on your everyday skincare routine, head to your local Walmart, walmart.com, or use the link in my description box below to try out the new era in body care by Billy. Thank you again so much to Billy for partnering with me on today's video. With that being said, let's get into the case. I do want to warn you that the information you are about to hear does involve the sexual abuse of a child. It can be a very triggering case for some, so if that is something that you are sensitive to, take this now as your warning. Kamari Holland was born on November 23, 2016 in Columbus, Georgia to Corey Holland and Christy Sippel. Corey and Christy also had another son together, who was two years younger than Kamari. Then, Christy had an additional two sons from a different father. Those who knew Kamari described her as having the biggest heart a little girl could have. She was always happy and smiling, always talking, singing, dancing, and recording videos. Everyone who knew little Kamari said that she was just the most genuinely loving and affectionate kid you could know. She was intelligent and confident, wanting to be the boss of her little brother and even her dad. Corey referred to Kamari as his little princess because that is exactly what she called herself, a princess. By August of 2021, Kamari had just started preschool at Just for Kids in Phoenix City, Alabama. She absolutely loved school and learning. She was just such a curious little girl. 
At the time, Kamari's parents were not together, and Corey had full custody of both Kamari and her little brother. Some sources state that Christy was actually not allowed to have any contact with her kids after the initial custody hearing, but Corey did allow Christy to see the kids on the weekends under direct supervision. This was because Christy was a heavy drug user. At the time, Christy was living in Columbus, Georgia, and there she was known by those around her as abusing drugs like meth, so she was in no condition to take care of her kids. But on the evening of December 12th, 2021, Corey allowed the two children to sleep over at their mother's house. He was under the impression that she was not going to be on drugs while they were under her care, that she was capable of taking care of her kids for just one night on her own. So, Christy left her home in Columbus, driving just over the border into Alabama to pick up Kamari and her younger brother. Before leaving, Kamari ran up to her dad, kissed him goodbye, saying that she would see him the next morning. However, by December 13th, 2021, Christy called 911 to report that Kamari was missing. She told the operator that she had her two kids over for a sleepover that night. She put the kids to bed, but when she woke up by 5.50 a.m. the next morning, she saw that Kamari was missing and the front door had been left open. Immediately, officers responded to the home and began their searches for the missing little girl. They did notice right away that there was no sign of forced entry, so they felt like the door had either been left unlocked or the abductor was someone known to Christy. Once starting their investigation, they looked into the people who Christy had been in contact with and could have possibly had access to the home and who may have wanted to take Kamari. Police found that on the night of December 12th, 35-year-old Christy had been in contact with 37-year-old Jeremy Williams. Police ran a search of his name and immediately, red flags went up. Just before Kamari's disappearance, Jeremy had been let out on bond in Muskogee, Georgia for simple battery, family violence, and third-degree cruelty to children. Beyond that, back in 2009, Jeremy had been arrested for aggravated child abuse after a three-year-old boy in his care was put into a pot of boiling water from the waist down, obviously causing serious injuries to the child. However, in this case, I guess there was a lack of evidence, so Jeremy was acquitted of these charges. A few years after that, there was a case in Alaska where Jeremy's own one-month-old daughter had been beaten to death while under his care. Once again, in this case, there was a lack of evidence, so although he was named as a suspect, he was not arrested for her death. So, based on all of this very concerning information, police knew that they needed to look into Jeremy as a possible suspect. They were able to use his cell phone number to ping his location, and they found that he was staying at the Bamboo Motel in Phoenix City, which is where Kamari lived with her father. Police tracked him down, and when they found him, he was smoking meth with his uncle. At that time, he was taken into police custody. After taking Jeremy into custody, they confiscated his phone and took it for forensic examination. They looked into his cell phone pings and they were able to locate his current residence. They then went to his home to execute a search warrant, but while searching the home, officers were met with a woman who introduced herself as Jeremy's wife. Officers told her that they were investigating a missing persons case, and to this, the wife responded with a horrified look on her face, saying, quote, If anything happened to that little girl, she'll be at an address in Phoenix City. She then gave them an address to an abandoned home owned by Jeremy. Officers knew immediately, just by the look on this woman's face, that they needed to investigate that address immediately. So investigators went to the home to search, and that is when they made a sickening discovery. It was in that abandoned home where investigators discovered the body of five-year-old little Kamari Holland. She was found naked, lying on the floor in the basement. Upon initial examination, it was clear that she had marks all over her body, indicating that she had been tied up and sexually abused. She had been bleeding and had injuries all over her little body. After her body was discovered, Kamari was sent off to the medical examiner for an autopsy. And just a warning, it gets really bad from here. It was there that it was discovered that she had been violently sexually abused with horrific damage to her genital area. 
She also had bruising to her forehead, nose, around her mouth, and to her backside. There was also bruising around her neck and wrists that matched up with the way she was tied up. The medical examiner determined that Kamari's cause of death was actually the result of asphyxia due to ligature strangulation. The toxicology report also showed that Kamari had methamphetamine in her system at the time of her death. So, this five-year-old little child had been drugged, tied up, beaten, and horrifically raped. After this horrific discovery was made, of course, Jeremy was officially arrested and charged with counts of kidnapping, sodomy, and murder. Then, of course, Christy, Kamari's mother, was notified about her daughter's heartbreaking and disturbing death. After finding this out, Christy went on the media to speak about just how hard all of this has been. In one interview, she called her daughter a blessing. She was the most caring, sweetest little girl who wanted to help others. She then said that the media is out there making her look like a monster, but really, she's just a mommy who had nothing to do with her daughter's death. She said that Kamari was her life. She lived for her daily. Okay. I'm Kamari Holland's mommy, and she wouldn't want nothing in the world but to donate her toys to another little child that was in need because she was a very healthy child. Oh, she looked like such a sweet little girl. <laughs> she was a very sweet child. She was beautiful. Sweet soul. I'm so sorry for your loss. And this is, I see this and I touch my heart, so I stopped. That's what she was. Mommy, let, let's help that mommy. She's like that. Let me hold She's your She's like that. She, um, we, we were at the gas station one time and we seen a family out there and one of the little girls didn't have shoes on and she said, mommy, we can help them, mommy, because I have so many pairs of shoes at home, mommy. Let's, let's, let's give them my shoes, mommy. And of course we gave them her shoes because and she's that caring. She had a heart. She had a, she had a spirit that she's been here before and she was a blessing. She is a blessing. Well, how are you coping? <laughs> I'm coping. I'm making it. The media is making me look like I'm some evil person, but I'm not. I'm a mommy, and I did not have nothing to do with this. She was my life. I lived for her daily. She was my only girl. I had three boys at her. Oh, she your youngest? She was my, no, I have one more under her. I have my son under her. And it's hard. It's hard. I don't know if I'm coming or I'm going, but I'm doing it for her. Do you have any support? Do you have people on your side? Someone's helping you? Ain't nobody on my side. They didn't even tell me about the balloon leak. The balloon release today. They haven't even mentioned her funeral or nothing. So will you get to decide that or? I don't think so. I think that's all dad. Dad okay. had custody of her. Okay. But you know what? I have my peace with her and she's here in my heart and that's all that matters. Yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, I can't even fathom what you might be going through but please know that our hearts and prayers are with you and i know just at the station you know we cover all kinds of news but for whatever reason just because of you know what happened it has really hit hard for Definitely. a lot of people and she you that's all you see over social media is her face she was so loved she was so loved what would you want viewers to know about your daughter she was just the sweetest girl in the world you couldn't, oh God, you couldn't harm her. She was too sweet. Like, you could not harm that little girl because she was just, she's so innocent, so smart. She was fantastic. She was perfect. However, just two weeks after Kamari's body was discovered, police arrested Christy on charges of sodomy, rape, and murder as well. At that time, police believed that she and Jeremy knew each other and that they had some sort of friendship where Jeremy would sell her drugs. Yesterday afternoon at around uh, one o'clock in Columbus, we were able to arrest uh, Christy Sipple, who is also known as Christy Hoskins. She has been charged with murder during the course of kidnapping, murder, during the course of rape, murder, during the course of sodomy, and human trafficking. Currently, Mr. Williams is being held in the Russell County Jail under a no bond for 
uh, capital murder of a person less than 14. And then it was after her arrest when Jeremy decided to call one of the investigators on the case by December 25th, 2021. He told the investigator that he had been doing a lot of praying and wanted to get some information off of his chest. Of course, the detective immediately went in for the interview, and it was at this time that Jeremy confessed to so, so many horrific, disturbing things. He started by talking about the death of his one-month-old Nadia in Alaska. He said that the medical examiner ruled her cause of death as a medical emergency within her intestines, but he knew that she died because of something he did to her. He explained that whenever the baby would cry, he would become enraged. So, he would often punch his one-month-old baby in the head and threw her down the stairs. After this shocking confession, the case into Nadia's death had been reopened in Alaska. In the interview, he also admitted that he molested his five-year-old stepdaughter on a daily basis. Then, he started talking about Kamari. Jeremy said that he met Christy through a mutual friend in April or May of 2021. The two would frequently smoke meth together and have sex. At the time, he was using PPP loans that he got from the government due to COVID to afford his meth. While the two continued to get to know each other and smoke meth together, Jeremy told Christy openly that he enjoyed performing sexual abuse on children. Despite this, Christy started asking Jeremy to babysit Kamari while she went out and did sex work. Eventually, this progressed to Jeremy and Christy coming to an arrangement. Just before December 13th, him and Christy arranged that Jeremy would pay Christy $2,500 in exchange for taking Kamari for one hour and doing whatever he wanted to her. He said that he never actually intended on paying her for this, but he knew that obviously Christy wasn't going to be calling the police because she's not going to tell the police that someone didn't pay for her services provided when those services are horrific child abuse. When December 13th arrived by around 2 a.m., Jeremy went to Christy's home to pick up the unsuspecting five-year-old little girl from Columbus, then headed back to the abandoned house in Phoenix City. On the drive, he showed Kamari a porn video and told her that she was going to be doing those acts on him. However, she refused and said she was not going to be doing that. This response caused him to become enraged, so he punched her in the head. When he got home, he parked in a spot that he felt was inconspicuous so no one would see him. I guess his aunt also lived either in the area or in that home, so he didn't want her to see him in that car with the child. In the car, he smoked meth and forced Kamari to smoke with him. He then raped her over and over and over again for an hour within the car. After an hour of this horrendous abuse, he suddenly became enraged and started to strangle her until his hands went numb. He said that once she was unconscious, he started looking for somewhere to bury her, but then Christy started calling him over and over and over again. When he got the call, he would answer and say that he was stuck in traffic and would be back soon, but obviously that wasn't the case. After this, that is when he brought Kamari inside of the home. In the home, he tied her up and continued to sexually abuse her. From the bruising that we've seen on her wrists and around her neck, it makes me think that she was alive and maybe just unconscious during the first part of this at least, but then at some point in all of this, she did pass away. When examining Jeremy's phone, they found that in yet another sick turn of events, he recorded the abuse. He took a total of six different videos where he is actively abusing Kamari. Investigators said that they knew it was him beyond a reasonable doubt in those videos because at one point, he drops the phone and you can see his face. According to phone records, it was about three hours after Jeremy took Kamari when Christy called 911 to report her missing. According to later review of CCTV footage, by around 6 a.m. on the 13th, Jeremy was seen back in Columbus before heading back to the abandoned home in Phoenix City. 
He then stayed in Phoenix City until just before 10 a.m. At the location of the abandoned home, police also found tire marks leading up to where Jeremy described pulling in and bringing Kamari in. It turned out that after bringing Kamari into his home and killing her, he changed the tires on his car so that they wouldn't match up, but they were able to confirm that the tire marks were a match to his old tires. Now, as all of this information was coming out about what Jeremy had done to this sweet, innocent little girl, a new victim came forward to investigators to talk about what she had experienced at Jeremy's hands. This 31-year-old woman said that on the night before Kamari's body was found, so around the same day that he had murdered her, she and her boyfriend had a huge fight. She said that she had nowhere to go after that, so she reached out to a friend who gave her Jeremy's number, saying that she could stay with him. But when she arrived to his place and went inside, she got a really bad feeling. She felt that something was off, so she tried leaving. But when she did so, Jeremy blocked the door with a deep freezer and told her to get down on her knees. That is when he forced her to perform sexual acts on him before raping her. As he did that, he kept saying Komari's name. He then bragged to this woman about how he taught a five-year-old to do sexual acts. She was then forced to stay in that home the entire night. The following day, this woman told Jeremy that she knew about this place where he could get drugs. Throughout her time with him, she realized that he was an addict, so this was the best way she knew to get him and herself out of that home. At that point, Jeremy had taken all of her personal belongings, including her phone, preventing her from calling for help. But she did end up taking Jeremy to the location where she had previously hid another cell phone in cases of emergency. So, once they got to that location, she ran into the bathroom and used that phone to call for help. She waited in that restroom until someone came to help her, which is crazy, the foresight she had to like have a safe place where she could hide a phone and call someone for help, that's actually really smart. So clearly, we can see that Jeremy is a disgusting monster who thinks that he is entitled to whatever and whoever he wants. Initially, after his arrest, Jeremy actually pleaded not guilty due to mental defect. And that is where the case sat for two years trying to figure out if he was mentally capable to stand trial. And in my opinion, anyone who can do such horrific things to a child is not mentally well. But that doesn't mean they shouldn't take accountability for their actions. That doesn't mean that they don't know it's wrong. And that doesn't mean that what they did doesn't warrant them being behind bars for the rest of their life. But by March of 2024, a little over two years after this horrific crime, Jeremy Williams actually pled guilty to the kidnapping, rape, sodomy, and murder of five-year-old Kamari Holland. For these charges, he was facing the death penalty, so under Alabama law, there still actually needed to be a jury trial for jurors to determine if the death penalty will be used. Mr. Williams has been wanting to do this from day one. Uh, obviously, we had an obligation to make sure he's competent to make these decisions had to make sure his constitutional rights uh, were protected, that he fully knew everything he's charged and all the punishments that were involved. So it's taking this length of time to get here, but Mr. Williams wanted to do this from day one. And so we got him to a point where he got, he got what he wanted. And so now we'll move on to the next phases and we'll see what happens then. Uh, what happens now is that there's a jury trial. Uh, there's a jury trial and the jury has to be death qualified and it's just like any other capital murder case. And all we did today is evidence that he is guilty, but it is not proof that he is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. So at the next phase, the state will have the burden of providing more evidence to go along with this evidence to prove he's guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. If they determine that he is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, then we go to the next phase. That next phase is the sentencing phase. And at that phase, that's when aggregating and mitigating evidence is presented to determine whether or not he would get death or life without parole. During that trial that lasted three days, multiple people testified about Jeremy's character, saying that he was a monster. He was soulless. He had no heart and no regard for anyone but himself. 
In the process of this, Jeremy asked that his lawyers not object or cross-examine any witnesses. Investigators spoke about finding Kamari's body. They showed the videos that Jeremy took on his phone. They showed his confession. During all of that, several family members of Jeremy's had to leave the courtroom because of how disgusted they were with this. There were several jury members who openly sobbed or teared up at the evidence. Overall, this was just a horrifying, gruesome case for anyone to have to sit through. Many of the investigators said that this was the worst case they have ever worked. At the end of this trial, which again, I'm sure was just the worst thing any of these jurors had ever seen, they went off for deliberations. And after deliberations, they came back and decided to sentence Jeremy Williams to death. And if I do say so myself, I couldn't agree more. This man does not deserve to eat. He doesn't deserve to breathe. He doesn't deserve to live after all of the trauma and suffering he has put so, so many people through. Some of you may disagree with me, but that is where I stand on this. Now, when it comes to Kamari's mother, who in my opinion is just as much of a low-life piece of trash as Jeremy, like I mentioned earlier, she was charged with rape and murder. However, the state did ultimately drop the murder charges and instead charged Christy Stipple with human trafficking. After the murder charges were dropped, she did plead guilty to human trafficking. There was no plea deal in place, meaning that she pled guilty not knowing what sentence she would be serving. As of right now, we don't know the official sentence for Christy, but she could be facing up to 20 years in prison. She will have to register as a sex offender and pay up to $10,000 in fines, which to me, I think is not even close to enough for what she did to her own baby. Do I think she wanted her daughter to die? Not necessarily. Do I think that she planned on him murdering her? Not at all. So I guess I do agree with them dropping the murder charges. However, she willingly subjected her daughter to the most brutal and painful torture a child can experience and she knew that it could cause her death. And for what? Drug money? I don't think human trafficking describes what she really did even a little bit. This was a five-year-old little girl who her mom cared so little for that she sold her to be tortured. That might be one of the worst things that's ever come out of my mouth. So I think that she should also be charged with reckless homicide in addition to human trafficking. Reckless homicide basically means that they know their actions create a significant risk of bodily harm to the victim, but the perpetrator ignores those risks and does it anyways, killing that person. That sounds like the perfect charge to me, and I believe it carries a sentence of up to 10 years in Alabama, so it could really lengthen her sentence if run consecutively. So that is a charge that I think is appropriate in this case. I do think 10 years is pretty low for someone who causes the death of another person because of their own irresponsible actions but that's a totally different conversation. I really hope that Christy gets the absolute maximum time behind bars, and if she doesn't, it's going to be an absolute slap in the face to her little daughter who suffered so, so very much in the last moments of her life. But with that being said, that is all of the information we know on this case as of right now. Of course, in the aftermath of this, Kamari's father, Corey, is absolutely devastated. He's happy that Jeremy was sentenced to death, but obviously that isn't going to bring his daughter back. With this, obviously a big question a lot of people have asked is why he let his daughter go with her mother when the courts ordered her not to see her. I had that question as well. As far as I've seen, he hasn't given a great answer for that, but what I've gathered from the interviews I've seen and the articles I've read is that he probably just felt bad that Christy couldn't see them. He wanted to offer a little bit of time for her to see her kids. He probably thought that she was doing better with the drugs. He probably didn't think that anything bad would happen. There's a big difference between doing drugs and raising kids and doing drugs and seeing your kids occasionally. Most people can clean up their act for at least a day or two when in the presence of their children. We see it in so many cases. Most of the time, people will clean up their act for a month or whatever, get their kids back, and then they do end up slipping up and neglecting their children. But again, they can at least keep up the act for a little bit. 
So in this case, I'm sure that Corey felt that nothing could go wrong within the 12 hours that they were with her. Little did he know, she cared so little for her children that she subjected her five-year-old to the worst kind of torture anyone could endure without a second thought or a care in the world. Obviously, the details in this case are horrendous. This is one of the worst cases I have ever looked into. But at this point, all I can do is hope that both Christy and Jeremy are suffering in prison. I hope that every inmate around them knows exactly what they did and are making them pay. Either that or they are in solitary, constantly alone with their thoughts, having nothing but time in the world to reflect on what they did. But with that, that is where I'm going to end today's video. And now I want to know what you all think. Do you think that Christy should have been charged with Kamari's murder or do you agree with the sex trafficking charges? What do you think of Jeremy's guilty plea and do you agree with him being sentenced to death? Let's discuss this and any other thoughts that you have in the comments below. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to turn that notification bell too on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure to follow my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Spotify. All will be linked down below. And if you have any case suggestions, please make sure to fill out the Google form, which is also listed down below. With that, hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.